Video editing has changed a lot over the years. We have progressed greatly with techniques, equipment and the theory of editing. Also, the change from using film to record moving pictures into digital has made large differences, making quality better and making it easier to edit. We can prove this with this short clip of a train made by the Lumiere brothers. This is in fact um, the, the first moving picture in history. This was made in 1895 and when it was premiered it scared people into thinking a real train was going to run, o run them over. Although this is shot all from the same place, it contains a wide shot, medium shot and a close up as the train comes closer to the camera. It goes from a wide angle to a close up. Contrasting to this clip made in 1895 would be this clip on the 2007 movie named Transformers directed by Michael Bay. Watching both of these, you can sit, watching both of these short clips you can see how filmmaking has developed as a whole. The main difference we've noticed is the quality of the image. However, less noticeable differences include the fact that the clip from the movie, Gravity, is edited and not all in one shot. Whereas in the Lumiere Brothers film, it is a continuous shot, not edited at all. Another factor showing how movies have changed is that because they are now all processed digitally, it is easier to include visual effects, and this allows directors to truly make unrealistic stories very believable. After the Lumiere Brothers, George Melies in 1902 made the first film in which stop motion animation was used. This was a big milestone in filmmaking history as it started off a wave of filmmakers being able to show their stories that wouldn't be possible in real life. This has led to animation in movies such as Transformers. Lev Kuleshov was also an extremely inf influential filmmaker as he invented what is now known as the Kuleshov effect. This is when you see a shot of a subject and then cuts to a shot of someone's face. This effect works as to show the audience what the actor is feeling. This means that if you had a shot of a donut and then cut to a shot of someone smiling, you can assume that the person smiling likes donuts. Alfred Hitchcock explains this effect very well in this next clip. Now we have a close up, then we show what he sees. Let's assume he saw a woman holding a baby in her arms. Now we cut back to his reaction to what he sees, and he smiles. Now, what is he as a character? He's a kindly man. He's sympathetic. Now, let's take the middle piece of film away, the woman with the child, but leave his two pieces of film as they were. Now we'll put in uh, a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? The dirty old man. This clip from 1968 movie, A Space Odd Odyssey, shows the cool shove effect. As you see, the clip of the actor, you don't know what he is thinking. However, when, you, when it swaps to the clip of the computer, you understand that the actor is feeling frustrated with the machine. Eisenstein was the first man to invent montage editing. This is shown in his film called Battleships Pontemkin, made in 1925. This video shows all of Einstein, Eisenstein's five methods of montage. These, in his words, these rules how to create collisions between shots. One, the first rule is metric. This means the film is cut with a tempo. Two, the second rule is rhythmic. This, this is about cutting the tempo of the shot with the action in the shot. The third rule is tonal. This rule relates to the tone of the image and the colours e.g. the contrast in the shot. 4. The penultimate rule is overtonal. This rule explains the relationship between all the different shots in the image. This could be a romantic scene cut next to an action scene or a black and white shot mixed with a coloured shot. 5. The final rule is the intellectual or ideolo ideological rule. This is the idea of juxtaposition between images and this, instead of making the film easy for the audience to sit down and watch, makes the audience need to constantly think about what is happening and what effect it has. This clip from the 1984 film, The Karate Kid, shows a lot of these rules in the montage clip from the movie. Continuity editing is also a big part of film now and it is a way of conveying time. It is when a scene is filmed and although different shots are used from different angles what is in the film think what is in the film things are not mess missed out or shown more than once the first scene from edwin s porter's the life of an american fireman shows us how they did not know how to edit with continuity 
As the firefighter goes down the pole in the first scene, it cuts to a different shot in which they all go down it again. This is repeating the same action and therefore not good e continuity editing. This can be compared with a scene from a modern day film such as Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. However, this isn't the only movie with continuity editing and is now this technique is used in almost all feature length film. There are a few different rules in continuity editing. These include the establishing shot, shot reverse shot, 180 degree rule, 30 degree rule, cross cutting, match on action, eye line match, re-establishing shot. The first rule, establishing shot, is a wide or extremely wide with loose framing. This shows a relationship between the important characters, objects and settings in a scene. A good establishing shot is this one from The Lord of the Rings. This clip from Star Wars demonstrated the shot reverse shot rule. This is when two characters are in a conversation and there is a shot of one character's view and then the other person's view. This can be altered with a high angle or low angles of people to show their power or weakness. Next, we have the 180 degree rule in which a camera's position in a scene cannot be moved more than 180 degrees, otherwise this can cause the audience to be confused as to where people are in the scene or who people are talking to. However, breaking this rule is a good tool for disorientating the audience and to show character's disorientation. Within this rule, you cannot move the camera less than 30 degrees one shot after another because this can make it look like a jump cut or an editing glitch. Cross-cutting is a rule that is used when showing two stories at the same time. This clip from in Inception demonstrates this rule. There was a shot of the motorcycle chasing the car and then it cuts to a different shot of a character at a different location. This clip from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly shows us a match on action. This is where there are two shots of one piece of action and it is edited so that nothing is missed or repeated. This clip shows us when the character pulls his gun out of his holster and shoots it. The other clip from Star Wars shows us an eyeline match. This is when a character is looking in one direction and the camera cuts to a shot of another character and they are looking in the opposite direction in relevance to the shot. This implies that the two characters are looking at each other. The final rule is the re-establishing shot and this clip from, Wa from Wally is, an, is a good shot. This is an establishing shot after lots of close-up shots. The purpose of this is to remind the audience of what the setting is.